Welcome to the Ebenezer Estridge Moravian Church. We pray that this time of worship will be a blessing to you. Please listen attentively to the following as it would aid in your comfort and safety with us. Always sanitize your hands upon entry into and exit from the sanctuary. As you enter, kindly allow an usher to guide you to your seat. We ask that you wear your mask at all times. If you feel the need to remove your mask, we recommend that you leave the sanctuary quietly, find a private place and remove your mask using the straps. Do not touch your body, especially your face. Take deep breaths and relax for a moment before returning. Before exiting the bathroom, kindly wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds while adhering to the correct hand washing protocols. Be reminded to sanitize your hands upon re-entry into the sanctuary. Avoid touching surfaces. Do not share hymn books, Bibles, or materials of any kind. Do not shake hands or hug anyone. You may extend your hand in greeting but refrain from touching. We know that the Lord is indeed calling you, but we can assure you not on your cell phone. So kindly select the silent or vibrate mode. We now invite you to remain reflective as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Good morning, church. The watchword for this week says, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7. Again, it reads, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7. Shall we all stand, please, as we seek to commence this morning's worship experience? Blessed are those who trust God. Whose trust is the Lord? Standing our roads by, by the stream. They have no fear of summer's heat, nor do they wither in the sun. In the year of drought, they are not anxious, for their lives bear the fruit of righteousness. Come to the waters of life, all you who trust in the Lord. We have come to worship. And, and to set forth our roots on into the streams of God's living water. We will sing a hymn 326, 326, oh for a heart to praise my God.
continue in prayer. God of majesty and mystery, we come before you in wonder and humility. Source of all that is, you are beyond our imagining, astonishing us with the detail and designs within your creation. Word of hope and healing, you touch our lives with truth and tenderness, revealing our need and our gift. Spirit of purpose and possibility, you move within us when we least expect it, awakening our gifts, urging us to respond. Receive our praise and prayer this day and prepare us to receive your word in your wisdom and warning. For we come to you through Christ our Lord, trusting in his grace and the truth. Together. God of life and love, at this season of the year, our hearts are grateful for all the love which touches our hearts. Still we confess that we are not always shining examples of the love we long for. Forgive us those times when we fail to keep our word and disappointed those who love us. Forgive us when we gave into our tempers and temptations and disappointed your hopes for us. Renew and make us through the grace of your Son, Jesus, your love made flesh. Amen. Prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Your response is, hear our prayer. God of mercy, mystery and mercy, we come before you today carrying hopes and dreams, the burdens and blessings of our lives. We bring all that is in our hearts and minds to you, seeking your comfort and strength, listening for your guidance, grateful that you hear us when we pray. We give you thanks that you engage us whenever we need you, in the midst of challenge and uncertainty. We pray today for all those who are fearful about their future and for all who wrestle with challenges at work or at home. Help us face our fears and our challenges, sure of your steadfast love. Faithful God, hear our prayer. God of hope and healing. In Jesus Christ, we confronted demons that trouble our minds and the pain and illness with which can weigh us down. We pray today for those who are facing health concerns and for all care for the suffering and those in need of support. Surround each one with your steadfast love. Faithful God, hear our prayer. God of peace and promise. When we wrestle with any burden, your spirit prays within us with sighs too deep for words. Today, we pray for those, all those who birds, whose burdens seem too heavy to bear, for the victims of violence and disaster, for their friends and families, for refugees at risk in so many places in the world, and those making new homes in new communities, for those caught in despair and poverty in our own neighborhoods, and in the forgotten corners of your world. Renew the strength of all facing realities beyond your control with a steadfast love. Receive all our prayers, Lord, spoken and unspoken, and equip us to do your will. Amen. Amen. At this point in our worship, we will receive an item of praise from our senior choir.
We thank our choir for that rendition. And you've heard about that road that will lead us safely or close to God. Amen. Amen. Let's give our choir another round of applause, please. <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. We'll now turn our attention to the written and the spoken word. And our Old Testament reading for this morning comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 17, reading from verse 5 through to 10, to be read by Sister Dwayna Henderson. And the gospel reading comes to us from Luke chapter 6, verse 17 through to 26, to be read by Brother Siran Henderson. the Lord. Sorry. Thus said the Lord, search these in seven. <laughs> Jeremiah seventeen verse five to ten. Thus said the Lord, Curse be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed, depart from the Lord. For he shall be like 
the herd in the desert and shall be and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the patched place in the wilderness in a stalled land not installed. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, but whose hope is is the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted in the waters and spread out his roots by the rivers, and he and shall not see when he cometh, and her leaf shall be green, and not be tearful in the year of doubt, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try to, I try the will, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. This is the word of the Lord. Morning, church. Morning. Scripture is written from Luke 6, 17 to 26. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. And in the companies of his disciples and the great multitude of people out of Judah and Jerusalem. And from the sea cast off Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they were vexed with unclear spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there, was a, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes and his, on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye for Blessed be ye poor, for ye are in the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for they shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for they shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name of e as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, be joy ye in, the day, in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did, they, did their fathers upon their prophet, the, upon, unto the prophets, but to unto you that are rich, for ye have received consolation. Woe unto, unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well for, of you. For so do their fathers that to the false prophets. You said the word of the Lord. All right, we thank um, Sister Dwina and uh, Brother Siran for the reading of God's word. And as we continue and prepare for, um, to receive God's word, we will stand and we're going to sing some songs of preparation. All I have to say is thank you.
Please be seated. Good morning, church. I'm the salt of the earth. This morning, I want to read for us from Psalm 1, Psalm 1, and it reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his food in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drive it away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for this very hour. God, we thank you for your blessings upon us. And we ask God even now that you will open our hearts and open our minds that we receive your word. And Father God, I pray this morning that when the word has come forth, that it will not fall on deaf ears. So, Father God, hide me behind your cross and let your word be heard. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Brothers and sisters, good morning again. This passage isn't new to any of us. This is a passage that we read often. And so this morning, I just want to remind us quickly what the passage, uh, what I believe that the passage is saying to us. You know, in life, we are given choices. We have to make choices. We can choose what to eat, whether it, is good for, whether it is good for us or not. We can choose to work or not to work. We can choose to marry or not to marry. We can choose to love people or not to love people. We can choose a lot of things and not choose a lot. But I want to say to us this morning, I want to remind us this morning that whatsoever we choose, there are consequences. Whatsoever we choose, there are consequences, whether it be good or evil. If one does not work, they will not get pay. That's negative consequence. And if one work, they will get pay. That's positive. It's a choice that we all have to make. So as we live this life, we realize that life is about choices. The choices that we make will determine the outcome of our lives. Psalm 1 is a psalm about good and evil. It is about life and death. It is about blessing and curse. Psalm 1 is telling us to take the right way which brings us happiness and will avoid misery and ruin. It will avoid misery and ruin if we follow what Psalm 1 is saying to us. It will avoid many heartaches. 
many problems. This psalm shows us the different character and condition of, good, of godly people and the wicked people. There is a difference between those who are godly and those who are wicked. It also tells us what will happen to those who serve God and those who choose not to serve God. Verse 1 to 3 in the Amplified Bible tells us about holiness and happiness of a godly man, a woman, a godly person. It says, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the person who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, not following the advice, their plans, and purpose, nor stand submissive and inactive in the path. We are seen as walk, not sit down to relax and rest. We are the scornful and the mockers gather. Verse 2 says, But his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord. And on his law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God, he habitual, habitually meditates, ponders, and studies by day and by night. And he shall be like a tree firmly planted and tended by the streams of water, ready to bring forth his fruit in his season. He says, leaf also shall not fade or withers, and everything he does shall prosper and come to maturity. Four and five tells us about the sinfulness and misery of the wicked person. And it says, not so the wicked, those disobedient and living without God, are not so. But they are like the shaft, worthless, dead, without substance, which the wind drives away. So therefore the wicked, those disobedient, and living without God shall not stand justified in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. That are those who are upright and in right standing with God. Verse 6 tells us, For the Lord knows and is fully acquainted with the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly those living outside God's will shall perish, end in ruin, and come to naught. This is what the psalm is saying to us. We are called to live a life of godliness. We are called, all of us are called to live a life of godliness. Who is a godly person? Who is a godly man or a godly woman? Do you consider yourself a godly person? Do you consider yourself a godly person? Let us look quickly at a godly person according to Psalm 1. We must remember in considering this, that God knows everything about us. God knows everything about us. We can try to fool our family members, our friends, our neighbors. We can try to fool the pastor. But you must remember that God knows everything about us. He knows our very intention. And so let us get that clear. God knows those that are his by name. God knows those that are by his name. A godly person is known by their character, by the way you live your life. Somebody would be able to know that you are a godly person. So a godly person is known by their character. A godly person can be identified by which rules they choose to, to walk, 
and live by. In this passage, a godly person must avoid all form of evil. All form of evil a godly person must try and avoid. A godly person, we must choose to live by the rules and the laws of God. So the question is, do you consider yourself a godly person? Am I a godly person? I believe that when all is said and done, when we are finished, I think we would be able to answer the question for ourselves, whether we are godly or not. Abstain from every form of evil, withdraw and keep away from it. Every form of evil we must keep away from. This part of this character is put for us because those that will keep God's commandment must be able to say to the evildoers, depart from me. And that is why this is first in, 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 in the passage that we must put away, we must keep away from all form of evil. Evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God, honoring and obeying them. When we keep away from evil, we will be able to keep the commandments of God. We will be able to honor them, and we will be able to be obedient to Almighty God. That is a godly person. As a godly person, we must keep God's commandment. We must honor them. We must obey. But how would we be, how would we be able to obey and keep the commandments? How are we to know what God and the scripture is saying to us? I suggest to us this morning... That in order for us to know, we must read the word of God. We must be in constant prayer with Almighty God. We must communicate with him. And he will direct us. And so we would be able to honor, to obey his commandment. When you depart from evil, that is where wisdom begins. When you depart from evil, that is where Wisdom begins. What is wisdom? Wisdom is, 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 is being able to know, to decide between right and wrong. To work out in your mind, is this what God would want for us to do? Is, that, is this what Jesus would have done? Am I doing the right thing? I am, make, am I making the right choice? Because as I said before, this passage is telling us about making choices, whether good or bad. And only a godly person can make the right choices as it pertains to God and the things of God. A godly person does not take advice from the ungodly. A godly person cannot look to an ungodly person as an example. And sadly, many of us, we take our example, we look to other people who are outside of the will of God for advice. And so we get ourselves in trouble. The ungodly person, they want to advise themselves. So how they could advise you? We must depart from evil. And that is when wisdom begins. That is when we're able to say, do I take the Bible or do I leave it? Should I rob Cindy or not? And wisdom will tell us that the word of God says that we must not steal and we must not covet. The word of God tells us so we need to seek wisdom when we depart from evil. We can't look to the ungodly people 
for advice and look to them as an example. And so today, I know many people don't like to hear the truth. But I just come to say this morning that many of us who call ourselves Christian will look to celebrities as an example, as idols. And the celebrities, they want to help themselves. When you hear the news every day, every now and then you hear one of them kill themselves. They have money. They could buy anything that they want. But they have no peace. So how can you look to an ungodly person for advice? How can you look to them as an idol? But I want to say to you today that we must look to Jesus Christ as an example. Because he's the perfect example. He is the perfect example because he walked in earth and he lived the life perfect without blemish. I, I, I didn't say that you can't listen to somebody and love to hear them sing or watch a movie and love a particular actor. But we must not consider them for advice. We must not look to them as an idol. Jesus is the ultimate advisor. And so I say to you this morning that we must look to him. What a sinner will do, somebody who is ungodly cannot counsel or advise you in the things of God. It is impossible. You can't tell me about God and you don't know about God. And so we must look to God for advice. A godly person avoids what a sinner will do. Their way must not be yours way. Avoid being where they are if you are not spiritually sound. Avoid getting yourself in situations where you are tempted if you are not strong enough. Let me say to you this morning, if you are a recovering alcoholic and you continue to lie between people who drink you're not going to get cured if you ain't strong enough. So avoid those sort of crowd and hang with persons that will uplift you and help you. The sinner way must not be your way. The sinner way, I say, must not be your way. And sad to say that Christians and non-Christians you can't tell the difference sometimes. Everybody dress alike. Everybody sound alike. And I say to you this morning that there must be a difference. Your character will say that you are different based on your dressing. You can't follow the crowd. Because the, the, the crowd most of the time is wrong. And so, if we are to be a godly person, then we must avoid sinner. We must avoid being where they are. Especially if we are not sound. Because you know what will happen? You will imitate them. Psalm 36 and verse 4 says, He plans wrongdoing on his bed. He sets himself on a, on a path that is not good. He does not reject or despise evil. That is a sinner. He plans wrong while he's on his bed. All kind of wrong things going through his mind. He sets himself on a path that is not good. He works out, I'm going to go today and I'm going to rob this place and that place. He does not reject or despise evil. So when we look at the, the godly person, the wisdom in that godly person will say, I cannot take it because it's not mine. It is wrong for, for me to back talk my friend. That is what wisdom will tell you. 
Wisdom will tell you the right thing to do. Wisdom will tell you because somebody got something it doesn't mean that you must have it. That's what wisdom will tell you. Wisdom will guide you. Wisdom will say to you that that is not the will of God and therefore we must not go that way. That is wisdom. Proverbs 4 and verse 14 and 15 says, Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not go the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. That is what wisdom will tell you when we study, when we choose to be a godly person. A godly person does that which is good and cleave to it. A godly person is one who is kind, giving, sympathetic. A godly person is not somebody who is grudge or who grudge people. A godly person is one who wants to see people do well and will encourage and help our brothers and our sisters. A godly person will indeed see somebody in need and go to their rescue. That is a godly person. We are an ungodly person will say, oh, you don't waste your time. Let him sort that out. If you are godly, you must submit to the guidance of the way of God and make it familiar to you. The word of God must be familiar to you and it must be your guide. And that is what scripture is all about, to guide us. And again, it brings me back to reading the word of God and understanding it. It brings me to Bible study. Where we study the Bible. The scripture says study to show yourself approved. How are you going to study and not read the Bible? How are you going to know what the word of God is saying to you and you have no idea what the Bible is saying? I'm not saying that everything you read you will understand. That if a pastor comes in. If you don't understand, consult the pastor. Bible study will help you to understand. But you must want to be a godly person. You must want to change. Because if you don't want to change, you ain't going to read it. If you don't want to change, you're not going to attend Bible study and prayer meeting. If you don't want to be a good person, a godly person, you, you're not going to be in the things of God. You don't want to be around church. And there are many persons who say, oh, I can stay home and serve God. I can stay home and be a Christian. Yes, you can. But the word of God tells us that we must not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. He tells us that iron sharpened iron. You might know something that I don't know. And I might know something that you, you don't know. And so when we share with each other, we understand better and we are able to live better lives. But you know, the problem is some of us, we believe we know everything. And so we need not cancel the pastor because I know. And many times we are dead wrong. When we read scripture, I believe that it is important for us to ask God to reveal his word to us. Not just jump in the Bible and start to read. Ask God to reveal his word for us. What he would want us to know for that time. And so we must read God's word. When we look at prayer meeting on a Saturday morning, we might have 30-something people or so but only 20 from Estridge, or maybe less. And we got more than 20 people in here today. So I want to challenge us. I want to say to us, 
that we must be intentional in our reading of God's word. We must be intentional in, the, in praying to in prayer, in prayer. These are things that we must attend if we are to grow in the likeness of God. If we are to grow, we must attend these. Ain't no maybe about it. Why you go to school? Why, we, why I went to school? Why you went to school? To learn more about the things. And so when we want to know more about God, we must read more in order for us to know. And we must consult God's word in order for us to be better people. Meditate day and night on the word of God. Make it a habit. Make it a habit to read God's word. And when you read, try and meditate on it. Understand it. You see, when one becomes old, sometimes they might get um, Alzheimer's and all these diseases that would cause you to forget. But you know one thing? The, those things that you learn as a youth, them are going to come back to you. You might not remember your husband's name or your wife's name, your wife's name, but you will remember the Lord is my shepherd because you learned it a long time ago. So meditate on the word of God. Hide it in your heart. Make it a habit. Make it a habit to come to Bible study. And now Bible study is so easy. Lie down in your bed. And just log on to Zoom. You don't got to wash your skin and come over here. You don't even got to dress up. You're in the nighty. And you're, and you're at Bible study. How good that is. You see, because every bad thing happened, they are good in it. And so, the COVID has allowed all of us and even an opportunity to attend Bible study without dressing up. Attend Bible study in the privacy of our own bedroom. And not only that, we are able to congregate via Zoom with people all over the world. Because when we have Bible study and prayer meeting, there are people in the U.S. who are locked down, people in St. Martin, people all over the place. And so it is not hard for you to attend Bible study and prayer meeting. Just log in. All of us, we are always on some sort of gadget. So just log in and let us attend Bible study. Let us learn more about the word of God. We must study, we must meditate. We must make it intentional in reading of God's word. This is what keeps one and the straight and now apart. The, the scripture is what keeps us in line. When we are inclined to do something wrong, we are reminded by scripture that we must do wrong. And so we have wrote that. And so the scripture keeps us on the straight path. And that is why some of us get ourselves in so much trouble. Because we, we now read scripture and we are off the road. This is what keeps one grounded. You, you know, the word of God, scripture, knowing God, having a relationship with God, being a godly person, is what keeps us grounded. Because you know, every day, Every day I leave home to work, I ask God to guide me. Because you know why? We're going to come up with a lot of different circumstances. And sometimes you really want to let go your tongue. But the word of God it will keep us grounded. In scripture it says that we must listen more and talk less. I mean, and if anybody knows me, I have a very short fuse. 
and only the word of God is what is keeping me grounded. Because I come up with some real foolishness every day. But the word of God tells me, take it easy. And so, when we have the word of God in us, and we have a relationship with God, we will tend to be more peaceful, be more at peace, and less in trouble. This is what helps one to make the correct decision. When we, make a, when we have a decision to make, we consult God and we ask God, what should I do? How can I handle this? And we must not ask God and answer the, 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 the question for ourselves. Allow God to answer it. Because many times we ask questions and boom, we be gone. We answer ourselves. Many times we bring things to God and we walk out, God, you ain't working fast enough and we go and we take it back up and gone again. Allow God the time to deal with the situation. Allow God to help us to make the correct decision. This is what strengthens one against temptation. This will improve our fellowship with, with the word of God and God himself. The word of God tells us in Proverbs 6, Verse 21 and 20 say, bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. The word of God will comfort you, especially in these challenging times. This is what the word of God will do to us when we bind it up in our hearts, when we learn the word of God, when we know the things of God. When we understand that God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When he said that I will not give you more than you can bear. Because many times we go to situations and we walk out, I can't bear this no more. But God understands and he knows that you can bear it. That's where you get it. But when you have God and the word of God in you, it will help you, it will strengthen you. When you walk, it will guide you, it will keep you up. When you sleep, the word of God will watch over you. When you awake, it will speak to you. And so sometimes you hear people say, a mind tell me this and a mind tell me that. A mind not tell you nothing, a God will talk to you. And listen to God when God speaks to you. But for God to speak to you like that, you must have a relationship with God. You must be a godly person. You know, these times that we are living in, it is very easy to give up. Very easy to give up. You know, there are many persons who um, have mental issues. There are many persons who are depressed. These are very difficult times, extremely difficult, I would dare say, especially for, for the most persons. It is extremely difficult. When we go in the supermarket, everything gone up. When we go to the gas pump, everything gone up. As a matter of fact, I went to the gas pump last week, and I see these were gone up to $16 plus. Gasoline up to $14 plus. Things that you could have bought with $300, you only get half of that now. And you ask what is going on. You wonder how you're going to live. Because everything is going up except your paycheck. Paycheck now more. Matter of fact, paycheck going down in some cases. Because some people are forced to work four and three days. Persons have lost their jobs. And so they become depressed. You know, some weeks ago, a farmer, a farmer, Miss USA, well, I don't know if he jump, push, or what, but she ended up through a window. But he had a story building. The 
There are many people who have been depressed. They're afraid of life. They want to give up on life because of life situation, because of the difficult times that we are facing. All of us are facing difficult times. But some better have done some, and so they're able to manage. What about those who are living with minimum wage and might have two and three children to look after and send school? How are they managing? Sometimes we pass people on the road, our friend, and we ask, how are you today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. And in, in this time, the inside, they're eating out. I am good, I am fine. But sometimes, just watch the face, you see they're not fine. They are depressed. I'm saying all of this to say that we're going to face the difficult times. We're going to face hard times. But when the hard times come, we need somebody in our corner. We need somebody to support us. We need somebody to say, all oh, is not lost. We need somebody to say that this is just a phase. We want somebody to, to say things might be hard now, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. And so I encourage you this morning to turn to God if you don't know him. Be a godly person. Get close to God. Because he said if you come close to me, I will get close to you. Again, many people are depressed and stressed out. But this morning, I come to tell you that even in these difficult times, the word of God is what will keep us grounded and in the right mindset if we faith not. If we hold on to God, we will get through all of this because everything will pass. It's only for a time. It's a season, you know, None of us are immune to difficulty. None of us are immune to hardship and hard time. Because Jesus himself went through the difficult times. And so we are expected to go through difficult times too. But the difference is how we come out. The difference is how we handle it. Are we going to just give up, throw our hands in the end, throw in the towel? All is not lost. I say to you this morning, you might have a difficult time. You might not have no money to go work tomorrow. You might not have nothing to eat when you go home. You might can't pay your rent or your mortgage, your loan. You might not be able to pay it. But I come to tell you this morning that all is not lost. We have the assurance, the godly person, which should encourage us that we will be blessed. We will be blessed. The word of God said that to us. But for the ungodly person, it is described as the opposite of the righteous, both in character and condition. The ungodly are led by the counsel of the wicked. They bring forth no fruit that is good or useful. The righteous are like valuable, useful, fruitful trees. But the ungodly are like a shaft which the wind blows away. They are like trash. They are like dust. They don't have no substance. They can't withstand anything. The wrath of God will drive them away in their wickedness. The shaft may be for a while among the wheat. They may be for a while among the wheat. But there is coming a day when the Lord will come and thoroughly purge the floor. There is coming a day when the Lord will thoroughly purge the floor. Today, I want to say to us, doors who make themselves as sharp by their sin and folly will be found so 
before the whirlwind and fire of the divine wrath. Rather, those who make themselves of shav, as shavs, those who make themselves as sinners, those who make themselves of, of, as the ungodly, there is coming a day when you will be tested and tried. When you will stand before Almighty God and that you will ask what you have done today. I place before us good and evil. I place before us life and death. I place before us blessing and curse. God knows our character. He knows your character. He knows mine. For those who are ungodly, I say to you, do not feel secure in the way of life. Do not feel secure in the day, in the way of life. It may seem pleasant now. It may seem that everything is okay. Nothing bad will happen to me. But in that day, what will your answer be? What will your choice be? If you continue and you feel secure in the way that you are living, the ungodly, you will perish. You will perish if you change not. The ungodly will perish if you change not. So, I begin with the question, are you a godly person? Are you a godly person? The word has come forth. The characters of a godly person were given. And so you need to look within yourself and answer the question, am I a godly person or an ungodly person? If you are a godly person, I say continue in the way of God. But if you are ungodly, I say to you, change, because you will perish. Let us pray. Father, and our God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that we were able to hear your word. And as we would have heard, God, I pray even now that we will search our hearts, our minds, our souls, and that we will see if we are truly living godly lives. God, help us not to become comfortable in the way that we live, but help us, O oh God, to strive to be closer drawn to you. Strive, O oh God, to become closer drawn to you. Because you said in your word, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. And so, Heavenly Father, even now we thank you and we bless you. We praise your God. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you will anoint each and every one of us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Father God, I pray that you will instill in us, O oh God, that you will create in us clean hearts. Clear creating us clean hearts, O oh God, new spirit within us. Father, help us, O oh God, as we seek to live, that we will be better persons, O oh God. That, O oh God, that we will be more loving and more kind to each other. That, O oh God, that we, will, that we will look to each other, God, and that we will seek to encourage each other, that we will seek to bless each other. Because, God, truly, in fact, that when you would have blessed us, God, you blessed us in a way so that we were able to bless others. So, Father God, we thank you even now. God, we just bless you. We ask that you will bless the rest of this service. Bless each and every one of us. And make of us a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We thank Brother Dylan for delivering this morning and basically sharing what God would have laid on his heart. And as we seek to respond to that sermon, 
I will ask for us to stand as we sing our hymn of response. Lord, you give me the great commission. Let us all stand, please. to this act of worship this morning. I do hope that your stay this morning, that you have been blessed and that you have been renewed to go out into the community to do ministry. So again, welcome to this morning's act of worship and I do hope that you are blessed. Do we have anyone who's celebrating a birthday Today or during the upcoming week, could you stand if you are in the sanctuary? 
If you're online, you can raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you. Okay, we have in our midst one person. Oh, we have two, two young ladies. Friday. All right, Sister Zaida is celebrating on Friday. I'll be celebrating on Thursday. And the Sister Leno will be celebrating on Thursday. We also have other celebrants, Brother Winston Brown, who will be celebrating on the 14th, Angelique Matthew on the 15th, Sister Tudor on the 17th, Shakira Mangra on the 18th, and Tavia Liebert on the 19th. So I would like for us to sing our birthday song for our birthday celebrants, please. So we're going to ask our pastor to bless our birthday celebrants today. Could you stand please, those of you who are in the sanctuary? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we pause to say thank you. Thank you for being God, God of our lives, the Almighty One, the one that guides and protects, the one that continues to draw us to you. And we thank you, Lord God, for those who are celebrating milestones today in the week during this beautiful month, the best month of the year, February. Hmm. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless them in their going, their coming, sitting, their rising. We ask that you continue to draw them to you, that you continue, Lord God, to cause them, O oh Heavenly Father, to subject themselves to you. So that in everything that they do, Lord God, they rely on you. As all of us seek to be godly persons, we pray, oh Heavenly Father, that they will rise, oh Heavenly Father, and be even more devoted and de dedicated to you and to your service. Help them to be examples, Lord God. Zaida to other young people. Sister Lenoir to younger women. So that, Lord God, persons will see you in their lives and also want to have what they have. And those, Lord, oh God, who are not in the sanctuary, who are celebrating, we also pray that you will cause your face to shine upon them and to bless them. Continue to lead them in paths of righteousness. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you are reminded that there are no visitors in God's house only family members that you have not yet met. And so I would like to ask if there are any family members whom we have not met, could you please, yet met, could you please stand if you are here? If you are here for the first time or the first in a very long time, could you stand so that we can recognize you, please, if there's anyone? <laughs> oh, 
All right. We will continue in our worship. However, if it is your first time, or the person a very long time, and you do not have a church home, we invite you to make Ebenezer your place of worship. Just a few announcements, and I ask that you pay keen attention. In person or face-to-face -face Sunday school for all ages resumes today, immediately after worship. Sunday school, face-to-face -face Sunday school, resumes for all ages today, right after, immediately after our worship experience. Senior choir practice is on Thursday at 7 p.m. Prayer meeting on Saturday at 5.30 a.m. And the praise team will practice on Saturday as well at 5.30 p.m. From next Sunday, we resume our color offering for missionary. Our color offering, and I believe we are all familiar with that. For missionary, we start next week Sunday, and our color is green. We all know what the green stands for, do we? No? All right. Well, um, if you don't know, or if you're colorblind, whatever it is that you bring, we will accept. All right? So if your green is the orange or the black or the purple or the blue or even the silver, we will accept. The silver is the coins, yes. Thank you. Whatever it is you bring that, is, um, that we can use as currency, that is, we will accept. We also resume our walk-up offering for our building fund next week, Sunday. All right? We all know how our building looks. We are here by the grace of God. And so we would have our walk-up offering next week, Sunday, for the building fund. Island Conference will be held on Saturday, 19th February at Bethesda from 9 a.m. to 12 midday. Remember, anyone can attend Island Conference as an observer. I would like you to pay special attention to this announcement in particular, as our fundraising committee will be hosting a takeaway breakfast. This breakfast will be held on Sunday, February 27, the last Sunday of this month, immediately after church. Tickets are now available at $20. Again, this is a fundraiser for our church. We know what our building looks like as we worship here every week. And we are really in need of a better look. And so, this is a fundraiser towards that effort. And we are expecting all of our members to participate in this activity. Tickets are already available. You can get your tickets today, right after worship. Members of the committee have tickets. If they don't have them on them, pastor should have tickets in the office. No, no, no. I no? Have, I have them right here. Oh, she has them right here. <laughs> right here. This is Brother Dale's 10. I have two packages. Of 10 at the back. Oh, yeah. Yes. Louise. Who? Sister Louise. Oh, Sister Louise, 141 to 150. Please make a note of that. Thank you, Sister Louise. So, along with those two packages that I gave out, the committee members. The committee members have. So please, so committee members, people are here in church who want to buy from you. So I hope you have your tickets. I've already sold my 10. <laughs> no, 
not just now, you know. I had 10 more that I sold. All right, so if you would like your tickets now, and let me just say that um, even if um, the members of the committee do not come to you, please just ask for a ticket or bring your $20 um, on the 27. We will not turn back anybody. And as a matter of fact, I dare say, I'm not the chair of the committee, but I dare say that we will not have any tickets be returned. So if you would have taken your 10 and they were not sold, you sell them somewhere or you buy, you, take, you put in the money, you take the food and you can give it to somebody in the community. We are not taking back any tickets at all. That's right. All right? We really would want to see our church look good. We're not the worst. We can do it. And we are going to get it done. It, take, it is taking a little while, but we will get it done. And so we expect that all of us will participate in this activity. Even those online, you may not be able to get the food, but you can make a donation. We thank you in advance. Via the Jad app. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> All right. Pastor is right on cue today. <laughs> well, as usual, anyway. <laughs> we continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in members, and also for those who may be those who may be mourning, and those who are at school. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Online, we have Sister Jusilla Payne. Um, those who don't know who's Jusilla Payne, Sister Silla, Sister Marcia, fifth sister. Sister Jusilla was ill and was hospitalized. And during that period of her illness, Sister Jusilla gave her life to the Lord, made up her mind that she will commit her life to the Lord and continue to walk in his way. She's online and she has asked for prayer. So let us at this time go to God in prayer on her behalf and on behalf of all those who are ill. She's home now. Thank God she's well. She's lighter. She's happier. She's at peace. And she's healed. So let us pray. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you that you are still in the healing business. We thank you that you are God that work miracles that you are God who really is patient with us and continues to strive with us and strive with us. And so, Lord God, on behalf of Jusilla, we, we, we just thank you this morning for what you have done in her body, in her mind, in her heart, and in her spirit. And so, Lord God, we claim complete healing in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to lead her in the right way that you continue, Lord God, to give her the strength and the courage that she, we, that she needs. We bind the spirit of anxiety and fear and we claim a spirit of peace, Lord God, as she walks in confidence, knowing, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you have healed her and you have called her and that you will be with her. And all those others, O oh God, who may be healing, whether in body, mind, or spirit, Lord God, we ask a special blessing and a special touch even now. We ask, O oh God, that those who continually have aches and pains as we grow older, Lord God, we pray that you will give us the strength to endure, that we'll not have a heart of complaining, Lord God, but a heart of gratitude and thanks to you, for we are still in the land of the living. We pray for our sick and our shut-in members, and we ask, O oh God, that you continue to, to, to give them what they need, Lord God. You continue to call persons who will be there for them, who will give them a call, who will visit them so that they may not feel lonely, Lord God. Continue, Heavenly Father, to give us that mind, O oh Heavenly Father, where we reach out to our members, reach out to people in our community who are lonely, who are marginalized, who are ill, who, are, who Lord God, just need to hear someone says, good morning, or I love you, take care, how are you? Help us, oh Heavenly Father, to be that one that will reach out, whether a telephone call or a visit. So give us, Lord God, that added strength and that added courage to walk with you and to be with you and to remain, Lord God, in your presence. We ask a special blessing on all those who are listening online, Lord God. And we ask, oh Heavenly Father, to just move, move within us and continue to draw us to you as we surrender totally and completely to your will and to your way. Make us, oh God, to live out our purpose so that, Heavenly Father, at the end of it, you will say to us, when done, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. We ask all these in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, those were 
all of the notices that I have before me. And so I expect that we will act in accordance with the concern us. As we continue in our worship experience, we present our tithes and offerings unto God. And I, I invite all of us to read the offertory sentence that is projected. Together. Our faith does not rely on human wisdom, but on the power of God working in us and among us. So we bring our offering, trusting that each gift has a power beyond itself, the power of God gives. Let us trust in the miracle of God at work in the world through the gifts we bring. And as our ushers wait upon us, we unite our voices as we sing our offertory hymn, Hymn 339, 339, Trust and Obey.
happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. No other way. Just trust and obey. Lord God, you have said that we should give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. A tenth. We've sung the song beautifully. <laughs> Trust and obey. Help us to be obedient in this area, Lord God, when we give to you. Help us to be obedient, giving back our time, our talent, and our treasure. Bless what we have brought, O oh God. We present ourselves one more time so that you can clean us up and dust us off, scale us off, and equip us for ministry. Lord God, as we go forth from this place today, may we go forth indeed seeking to live godly lives. Those of us who are ungodly, and even though we may feel that we are godly, we may see some ungodly things in us, Lord God. Bring them to light and quicken our conscience so that we will repent and seek your face. Lead us, O oh God, in the way we should go. Lead us, O oh God, so that as persons look on us, they can see indeed God is inside of us. For we seek to do at all times things that are godly. So bless us, O oh Heavenly Father, in every area of our lives so that we can subject ourselves unto you and so that we can continue to minister to the needs of others around us. Father, we look to you. We look to you because you alone, you are our help. You are our help. As we look to you, O oh Heavenly Father, may you rise and may you be glorified in our lives, glorified in our church, glorified in our workplaces, in our communities, and among our family members. And the blessing of God Almighty, the God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.